Hello, I'm Bernie Rush, and today I'm going to talk to you about Six Sigma standards in your organization. If you have been on the Six Sigma journey for some time, you are probably well aware that there are a number of standards in the marketplace. Organizations such as the American Society for Quality, or ASQ as it is commonly known, and the IASSC have been certifying green belts and black belts for many years. Um, there are many, many other certifying bodies also in the marketplace. So today I'm going to introduce you to the ISO standard, the International Standards Organization standard that actually governs Six Sigma. It's ISO number 13053 and it's entitled Quantitative Methods in Process Improvement Dash Six Sigma. So that's a bit of a mouthful. However, the document itself is actually very easy to read. It runs to only 30 pages and it's a really brilliant guideline for anybody who is managing or implementing Six Sigma within the organization. Now, I cannot reveal the entire contents of the ISO document to you because it's, it's essentially it's a licensed document and you will need to go to the ISO website to download it, to pay for it and download it yourself. However, I will give you a brief overview of the contents. Firstly, it describes what exactly is meant by Six Sigma. In other words, it gives you the statistical definition and it talks about the 1.5 Sigma shift that was introduced by Motorola. It also gives you advice on how to measure process performance so that you don't fall into the trap of just measuring at the last stage of the process, but that you actually use the metric that is called rolled throughput yield. After that, the document discusses the levels of competency required from the three certified belts, that is yellow belt, green belt and black belt. What should you expect those certified people to know and be capable of. Then it gives an outline of project selection. It gives guidelines on how you would select um, a Six Sigma project. For example, if you have many projects from which to select, it gives you a guideline on how to prioritize them and to select the projects from which you will get most value. The next very useful element contained in the document is a guideline on what proportion of yellow belts, green belts and black belts you should actually have within your organisation. Personally, I found this very useful and our clients have benefited from following this guide over the years. And finally then, it gives the curricula associated with each certification level, specifically green belt and black belt. Um, so that you have a definitive international standard about what should be included in the education curriculum for those certification levels. I hope you have enjoyed this brief introduction to ISO 13053. It is a very useful guideline for implementing Six Sigma in your organisation. If you would like help on how to structure your Six Sigma programme, please be sure to contact us. We are here to help. Thank you for watching.